Hi everybody, this is Kevin England from the Northwest New Jersey Beekeepers Association in BK Corner. What I'm going to talk about today, what I'm going to get set up is some feeding boards for my hives. I have three hives on the property and they're in need of feed. They're a little bit light because we've had such a warm winter. I want to take you through what I'm going to do here, getting these boards prepared. So the first thing is I have a 25 pound bag of sugar here and I've measured that out and I'm going to put five pounds in each one of these boxes. So five pounds of sugar is a thousand milliliters in, in this container or five cups of sugar weighed out and that makes well let me say that again it's two and a half pounds is five cups now if you have sugar that's wet and it has more moisture to it it may be a little bit heavier but what I did is measured it out on a scale and I put it in here and this is five pound bag of sugar where you could just buy the five pounds from the store this is uh, three cups of water. I'm going to use a cup of this for this five pound mix. So I have three cups here for all three of the containers. And in this it has a tablespoon of vinegar to prevent it from molding if it sits out on the hive. Now these boxes are a modified mountain camp ring. It's just basically a frame with four sides, the same size as a hive dimension. And in the bottom of it I've tacked a queen excluder where the bees can come through the hole and get to the sugar. And what I'll do is I'll line these boxes with some wax paper so that the sugar doesn't fall down through to the hive. Now you mix just enough water in the sugar solution for it to pack down in here and to get stiff. Now the wax paper is 12 inches wide and the box is a little bit wider than that so I'm going to cut a piece off and overlap it but the paper should be thin enough that the bees are going to chew right through it. So what I'm going to do now to get started is use my mixer and some water, pour it in the sugar, mix it to the right formulation and then I'll use this spatula like a trowel to place it down in here. Now at this time of year you would only feed the bees if they needed it for an emergency and given that it's been so warm here in New Jersey for uh, December of 2011 and January of 2012. The bees have been active and I notice a couple of my hives are light on store so I am going to do some emergency feeding. It's really not much different from opening the upper cover and pouring sugar around the hole in case they need it. They may or may not take this but I'm going to get to this. I'm going to pour this water in. I'll mix it and we'll come back later when I have this set up. So I mixed the first batch of five pounds of sugar, and to be clear, five pounds is 10 cups of measured sugar and one cup of water with a teaspoon of vinegar to prevent it from spoiling. What I've done here is I've lined it with wax paper, and I actually think I'm gonna leave this extra space on the side for the bees to come up through and be able to get to the sugar that's on there. This is not much different in aspect to pouring sugar on the inner cover but in this case it's packed down a little bit and it has the consistency of Play-Doh. I know it's probably difficult to see on the video but it's a little bit stiff and it's easy to work with the trowel in here. Now what I expect to have happen is that this will dry out a little bit and over time because sugar is hygroscopic it will absorb the moisture, excess moisture in the hive and the bees will take it. Now one thing I want to point out about these boxes, when I saw the video on the web they made them with wire or uh, a mesh on the bottom, a screen is the word I'm looking for. I made it with a queen excluder. They talked about if you put in the amount of sugar that this could hold, which is 20 pounds, that this could sag a little bit. I put actually a little shim of three quarter on the bottom this is pretty tight, but even if you loaded it and it sagged a little bit, it would not come down to the point where it's laying on the frames and prevent the bees from walking around underneath it. So this goes right over your hive chamber, and then we'll have the insulation box over top of it. So we'll get finished with these two boxes, filling them out, and we'll go out to the hives and put them on and show you what it looks like in practice. We're out at the hive. This is hive site number three for us. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. It's the warmest part of the day. It's about 40 degrees here today on Super Bowl Sunday and what we're going to do is take this top off. We're not going to expose this uh, hive really a lot. We're just going to take a peek at what's going on inside, put the sugar box on and put it on. Now you'll notice I have a three box configuration here. I have two deeps which is normal for this time of year. And then we had a honey super on. 
put this honey super on in November to feed the bees and for whatever reason they didn't pull it down so I just left it on and then this top box is an insulation box it has uh, insulation of shredded paper and foam on the top to help keep the heat from escaping the hive they do have a top entrance here which is just a notch cut in this box and what we're going to do is put the sugar board underneath that they'll be able to pass through the sugar board and come out this notch if they want so we're in full sun right now a couple bees leaving going for cleansing flights but for the most part we're not seeing a lot of activity so we'll see what we're going to get so i'm going to take the top cover off and we'll pop this insulation box off we'll take a look at what's in there and then what we'll do is close it all up so here we go Now while I'm doing this, I will note that I'm going to not go deep into the box here at this time. We don't want to chill the brood and we don't want to break all the seals. So let's uh, pop this off and you can hear it crack some of the propolis that they have. I'm going to quick take a peek and I see no bees except for one small one up here in the top. I'm just going to take a quick look. And what I see is I see empty frames here, a handful of bees. and. This was a box full of pollen and, and honey, and it is empty. They have uncapped just about everything in here, and I could feel the heat coming out of the hive, and I'm not going to dawdle here, and I want to let all their heat out, so I'm going to take my sugar box, put it right on top, and it'll be interesting to find out whether or not they find this and come up and get it. And now we can just take a peek at them every once in a while, so put the insulation box back on and close it up not too easy there's really no need for an inner cover on here but I just leave it because um, don't want to take it back to the house so but it too has a, a notch on it now I have no pass through for the insulation here it's solid all the way across the top I'm just gonna leave it out here anyway we'll go check the other hives and see what we see so I'm at hive site number two. Uh, this box a little bit different configuration. This top hive insulation box didn't have a notch cut in it. So what I have here is a three quarter inch emery shim. It's just a three quarter frame with a notch cut out of it here. So what I'm gonna do is pop it off, put the sugar underneath uh, the insulation box, but on top of the emery shim. So let's see how that goes. Now this is the box on New Year's Day that all the bees were up in the top honey super. So it'll be interesting to see if they're still up here. Pop the seal. And take a look at what we got. And they are, the cluster is right up here on the top. It's about this big. Bees look really nice. Wow, this box is empty. There's nothing in it. That's the reason why we're doing this. And the entire cluster is right here. The smell coming off this hive, the honey and the, and the uh, pollen I can smell. And they look great. And they're absolutely not occupied with me at all. So come on over here with the camera. And we'll take a look at what we got. And you can see where the cluster is. You see they're right up here. Now all these bees are beautiful. They're small, but they're brand new bees. They have that fuzzy they have the fuzzy abdomen or the fuzzy thorax and they look clean and shiny and uh, they're all relatively new so you see some of them they're starting to get their tails up and uh, we're going to cover them off so we don't chill them not exactly sure where the brood is here but um, you know there's your cluster right there right up in the top let's put some sugar on them and get them buttoned up here so we don't chill them off Hmm. That box has got a little bit of a twist to it, which I don't particularly like. To make sure we put some weight on it so it doesn't leave a gap that it's going to allow airflow in it. So, uh, live and learn. First time I'm using these boxes. And you'll note they're not painted. I just made these not too long ago. I'm going to use them for a short period. It's going to be up for a month, maybe a month and a half. They'll be fine unpainted. And then I'll take them back and uh, during the summer I'll paint them up so they look nice and don't look so shabby. But 
for now they're going to serve their purpose. So we got a little bit of a twist to this box and it's got a little bit of gap here. Make sure we put something really heavy on top so that it squeezes it down. That's hive site number two. Bees are still alive. Last site, hive number one. Uh, you can see the bees are somewhat active. They're also right here at the entrance. I'm wondering if they're in the top. Now we list, lifted this hive just a little bit earlier. It is really light. They need to be fed in here too. So I'm gonna pop this one off and take a look and see what we got. I don't know if I have an inner cover on this one. They have glued it down. As you can tell, the whole box came with it. As I look in here, I have a handful of bees up in the top. All the honey is gone. Now, it could be that during the warmer days, we've had some of those in January, that they took the honey out of this box and pulled it down. I do not see the cluster up here in this box. I have to wonder if this box being empty, if they'll come up through this and get to the sugar, but it is what it is right now. So I'm going to put this sugar on. Now given that it's early in February, they'll come and get the sugar, but I'm not going to feed them pollen yet. And again, the sugar is for emergency purposes, but at some point if I feel that they need it, I can put a pollen patty in here, or I can go a little bit deeper with that. So we're going to cover this off, get them. Uh, taken care of and I'll have to put an inner cover on this because they've glued it together. All right. Come on out of there, little girl. Every bee counts. All right. You get the, the back's not lined up, Dad. I'll line it up a little better. Yeah. So that's it. We'll check on these girls a little bit sooner. You know, sometime about mid-February. We'll continue to come out and watch your activity. A little worried about whether this hive or not was going to survive the winter. It's a little light on stores and, um, you know, there's still bees operating in here. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. If we can make it to March with this one, I think we'll be in good shape. All right, thanks for watching. See you, everybody.